Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Aisha's English Oasis and What's in Your Teaching Toolbox. Today I'll be talking about my love for traditional wooden games. I love the look of them and the fact that they remind me of my childhood. I also really enjoy seeing the look on my students' faces when I take them out in my classes. Um, I'm fond of using them in my grammar and vocab classes. I usually divide my classes into groups or teams. They then take turns answering questions. Um, and then after about four or so questions, they've got about a minute to play the games in order to get points for their teams or groups. Or the game can just be a way to get um, bonus points for their teams or groups. Either way, it's a lot of fun. And as I said, you know, I really love the look of these games, the feel of these games, um, just, you know, the fact that they are nostalgic as well. But, you know, I, you know, like many teachers out there, I also really, really enjoy creating my own games as well. But sometimes it's nice to use pre-made games. Anyway, let's get right into it. I'll be sharing my screen um, because I'm currently in Zoom. So um, I'll be sharing my screen and you'll be able to see some of my games. Some of them, I'll just keep them in their boxes and others I'll take them out so that you can have a look at them as well. So um, I've attached my phone to, well, I haven't really attached my phone. Um, I've connected my phone to my, my Zoom meeting. So I'm using my Zoom app on my phone to connect to this particular session. Okay, and here I've got my first lovely game. It's called Chopstick Challenge. By the way, I got a lot of these games from um, a store here in the UK called the works it's yes it's called the works and it has lots of stationary stuff lots of cool games and things like that as well i'm sure many of you who are in the uk are familiar with that particular store anyway um you know they're reasonably priced and so it's good to just kind of go to that place and you know have a little browse just to see what they've got anyway this is chopstick challenge a balancing game it says text your manual dexterity by balancing the colored counters on top of the columns without toppling over the stack so um this is a really good game to play with my students especially the ones who um, are not used to using chopsticks and things like that. This can be a real challenge for them. And so I really love using it. But obviously, if you're good at using chopsticks, then, <laughs> you know, you're, you're easily going to get points for your group or team. So let's open this so you can see what it looks like. Now, these are some cheap wooden chopsticks I bought, especially because um, you don't have enough chopsticks in the in the box when you want to play with you know larger groups so that's a good tip you can get um cheap chopsticks at a convenience store or something like that at your local supermarket um if you really want to you know maybe have your your kids playing this in pairs or something like that anyway these are the chopsticks that come with the game they come in different colors and so you know they're quite beautiful and you've got these columns and these wooden discs and you basically have to get a wooden disc like so see it's difficult even for me right and then you've got to place it on these columns okay so as you can see that can be quite challenging for some of my students Okay, so another great chopstick game is the Tweedledee and Tweedledum chopstick challenge. Um, and so basically you're doing the same thing of putting um, chopsticks, not chopsticks, wooden discs onto a column. But this time you've got to, you know, make the Tweedledee and Tweedledum characters. So this is even more challenging. Okay, so let's see what it looks like inside. Right, let's open this baby up. Ah, oh, look, you've got the fantastic pieces. You've got a little instructions um, sheet. So that's quite nice. Let's put that here. 
Um, here are the chopsticks, again, beautifully made. Here are the little columns. So you put that down like so. And then you've got all the beautiful pieces, you know, and you've got to put them in the correct order, right? Now, teenagers love this, kids love this, adults love the challenge of it all. You know, everybody really participates. Okay, so that's the Tweedledum and Tweedle, Tweedledee and Tweedledum chopstick challenge. A fun, fun game. Okay, so next is an all time favorite the egg and spoon race. Don't you just love this picture on the cover? Okay, so let's open this one up. And this is great when you're playing at Easter time as well. So it's great for um, uh, an Easter game. Okay, so these are the little eggs. They're wooden eggs, but I also like using rubber eggs as well. Um, or plastic eggs, because again, if you want to um, have larger groups, you might not have enough eggs. But you know, these are in beautiful colors. And these are the spoons. You can also use plastic spoons too. But again, I, I just love the look and feel of these wooden spoons and all the lovely colors. So yeah, look, I don't know. It seems very Victorian as well. I really like the look and feel of, of this. Okay, so the next games are hook a fish and hook a duck. <laughs> I'm sure you've played this before. Um, so look, let's have a look. Let's open these boxes. Right, so I've opened um, the hook a duck box and you can see these little duckies. Look, how cute are they? They're beautiful. Right, okay. So imagine you've got to hook a little duck. And look, it's much more difficult than you would think. Yeah, look, it's quite hard. Okay, um, let's see if we can find the little column one moment here we go right okay so you've got a little wooden disc and you put this column onto the little wooden disc or in the wooden disc like this and then after you've hooked a duck or a fish okay i'm just gonna do this the easy way you've got to then place it onto the column like like that and unhook it all without using your hands basically so it's not easy it's quite difficult isn't it yay i love that now this game is a ring toss game and i'm not going to bother unboxing it because it's a bit bigger than my other games and you can really see from this lovely picture what's inside anyway right so you've got these little wooden um, columns and you've got to toss these rope rings onto the columns and you can really you know place these around the classroom to make the game quite difficult so you can place them further and further apart and so you're increasing the challenge each time um, again everybody responds beautifully to this game so yeah a ring toss you can never go wrong with a good old ring toss now this next game can be a bit controversial because it includes a, a wooden gun it's called desktop target practice and so if you don't want to use something like this in your class i fully understand you do have to you know um 
basically tell your students at the very beginning about the rules of using uh, a wooden gun. You know, it's you, you're shooting a target, and so you know safety is important. And you know, so make sure you explain. Um, the gun safety rules, the wooden gun safety rules. That sounds very violent, doesn't it? The gun safety rules. But please don't shoot other students. Do not point this at someone. Always keep this part of, of the gun, you know, down if you're not using it because obviously if you um, unwittingly release the rubber band then that can you know hurt someone I guess so you have to be very clear and strict about those particular rules before you begin using something like this um, but you know once that's done it's quite fun it really is um, so let me show you what it looks what it looks like what what the inside of the box looks like so I'll just put that over here so this is it and as you can see the rubber bands are here isn't that beautifully made look at that beautiful okay and this is the pistol this is the gun <laughs> uh, that's the gun here and this is how you place the rubber band on it. So there's a little notch here at the mouth of the gun. Um, and then you've got to stretch it until it um, notches onto one of these little wheel things. Okay, so that's it. And then you pull the trigger that releases the rubber band and you've got to hit a target. Um, and as you can see, they've got different numbers, 10, 20, 30 and 50 so you've got a minute to hit as many of these as you can and you get these points for your group or your team you know as i said students love playing this and as the game goes on you can move the targets further and further away to increase the challenge Okay, here's another beautiful game. It's called the Bottle Top Challenge. It's a balancing game. So as you can see, you've got a bottle, a wooden bottle. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Definitely bottle-esque. <laughs> and you've got this little thing that you can pop on top. Okay, so you've got to stack the bottle tops onto the bottle as many as possible within let's say a minute or 30 seconds you decide um and obviously it's a balancing thing so you know try not to let them fall and at the end of the game the total number of bottle tops that you've got uh, is basically added to your team's points so this can be a lot of fun once again, you can use chopsticks to make this even more difficult for your students, even more challenging for your students. And look, you've got these lovely bottle tops that you can use in other games as well. Well, if you're fond of bowling, you're going to love my next game. I've got Skittles, wooden Skittles. Um, can I actually open it? Yes. Okay. Right. So these are mini Skittles. They're quite small, as you can see. I've also numbered them. Um, so yeah, uh, there was a reason why I, I numbered them, but um, that was for a specific game. But okay. Anyway, they're quite little. And you've got to basically hit your Skittles to get points. In fact, you can maybe get 12 points or 10 points or something like that. Yeah, so you can number number them um, so that, you know, students can get different points. You can choose where you want to put the numbers and um, the points you want to allocate, okay? Um, we've got a lovely wooden blue ball. Isn't that beautiful? I love things like this, okay? So um, you can use obviously plastic bottles and things like that in your, in your class as well but you know as i said i really love these mini skittles um and what i've done is i've also got mini post-its okay like this 
And what you can do is you can write um, a, a particular word or grammar point onto these mini post-its and you can place them on the skittles like so. So if they knock over this particular skittle, they probably have to make a sentence or something like that using the word or the grammar point that you've written onto the little post-it. Okay, as you can see, the post-its are um, laminated so that you can use a, you know, a marker, uh, one of those um, whiteboard markers that you can erase. So you can use these again and again and again. So that's something you can do. Okay, so um, the next one is a tangram or a tangrams. Right, so look at this. Again, isn't that box beautiful? Now, this is great when you're teaching the little ones shapes, but you can also use this with your older students because let's look, well, yeah, let's look inside. Let's have a look. So we've got some shapes here. Okay, so you've got a little, you know, a little instruction booklet. We don't need to look at that now. Okay, so you've got all these beautiful picture shapes and the challenge is to basically um, recreate these pictures on, in under a minute or 30 seconds in order to get points for your team. Okay, so look, those are really beautiful. Um, and these are the wooden shapes. Let's have a look. So here we have the shapes and I normally give my students the cards. So they've got the cards in front of them and they have to try to basically make these pictures, as many of these pictures as they can um, in under a minute or two minutes. So you can increase the challenge by reducing the time, you know. Or you can just, you know, if you've got younger students, get them to make maybe two of these pictures or one of these pictures, depending on, you know, how dexterous they are, I guess. But yeah, with older students, definitely give them um, maybe a, a, a stack of, of pictures, maybe five pictures or something like that, and tell them they've got to make as many of these shapes as possible in under a minute, in under 30 seconds, etc. Okay, so that's tangram. Let me put that back. So I've got some extra little plastic shapes and whatnot in that. Okay, what did I do with the box? Uh, okay, it's here. <laughs> right, okay. The next one is really, really cool because it's always nice when um, what you're teaching also involves cross-curricular subjects as well. So here we've got some um, some mats, right? So here you've got little wooden mats problems. <laughs> okay, so again, if you're teaching the, the mats symbols, like the plus sign, the minus sign, etc., you can get them to say these out loud. And again, it's great when they're working in pairs um, to do this. So one plus six, yeah, equals seven. So they can ask each other, what's one plus six? Or one plus six is equal to, you know, so they can definitely work on their own um, to do this. So they don't need the help of the teacher. You just teach them the, uh, you know, the, the, the math symbols and off they go. You know, the challenge is to also say all of this in English within, let's say, a minute. So you give them maybe, I don't know, six tiles and they've got to, to say all of these um, in English with the correct answers, you know. So you get a point for maybe saying all of this correctly and a point for solving the, the, the maths equation, I guess, you know. Again, you can increase or decrease the challenge as you see fit. Okay, so what's next? Ah, 
well, this isn't a game, but well, it is a game. It's Yahtzee. So obviously you can play Yahtzee in class, but I didn't really buy this to play Yahtzee. I bought it because I liked the massive dice that um, come with this. Um, I don't know why I've basically knotted this like this. Anywho. Okay, so look. Oh, aren't these beautiful? I love them. They're massive. So yes, you can use them to play Yahtzee, but you know, you can also use them for a number of games. And the fact that they're wooden, ugh, a bonus, an absolute bonus. Okay, so those are beautiful on their own, just to look at. Right, okay, so um, what's the next game? Ah, so we talked about numbers. Let's look at some more shapes. So we use shapes in the Tangram game, but these are wooden magnetic shapes, which means you can place them on your whiteboard if it happens to be magnetic as well. Or if you've got mini whiteboards that are magnetic, you can also place these onto mini whiteboards too. Um, I generally play Pictionary with these. So um, instead of getting my students to write or draw on the whiteboard, they would have to, you know, um, make, uh, make pictures um, out of these. Um, you can give them little cards with a word on the card, like a Christmas tree or a flower. And they've got to make, um, those those images with these within a minute within 30 seconds whatever it is um, you, you can use words from your word list to make it even more challenging and again you know it doesn't matter what age your students um, it, it doesn't matter how old they are everyone can play can play with this or with these lovely shapes um, so that's the another way to use something like this now i've got to show you this next one this is my wooden clapperboard isn't it fabulous <laughs> um i always use this when i'm doing classroom drama you know so when i'm recording my students you know whilst they're doing a skit or you know something like that I, I always say lights, camera, action, or I get my students to be the directors. And so they say lights, camera, action, and they, you know, um, tell everyone what to do, basically. And they love playing that role. But more importantly, they love using this. They, they really enjoy having props. You know, it really makes a difference when you've got something like this in your hand, you know, whilst playing the role of a director. So it's wooden. It's a wooden clapperboard, not plastic. It's really, really nice. Yay. I love that. Okay. So here in the background, you can see my wooden blocks my tumbling tower right so um, i'm sure all of you are familiar with jenga and so i use these wooden blocks to play essentially jenga or tumbling tower um, and i've got them in different shapes and sizes um, i've put these one in the little container for easy access they're a little bigger than the ones in this plastic container but again, students have to um, stack the blocks, you know, as high. Well, you can do this, get them to do this very quickly themselves. So make sure you've got a block, a, a tower like this. You make the tower and then, you know, the Jenga rules. You've got to pull out um, a, a piece of wood um without making the tower fall basically you can also play 101 games with these um wooden wooden blocks but it's, it's really great to have them because you can be very inventive and creative um, and use them in a variety of ways but jenga is an obvious way um, you can use them or tumbling tower so yeah it's nice to have things like this okay let me put these back Okay, 
Right, the next one, and this will probably be the last one. I do have many more, but I, I don't want this video to be too long. Okay, uh, this is very similar to hook a fish, hook a duck, but this time all your pieces are encased in a box. So basically these are the pieces to make a box, okay? So you kind of stack them in a box shape. I don't want to do that at the moment. And you've got these, again, wooden, beautifully illustrated. Um, I've got two sets of these, so I can have my students in different teams working from different boxes. That's always nice. And they come with these, these rods with magnets at the end of them. And again, they're beautiful. One moment. Okay, so this is what they look like. So these are the little rods and you've got the, the red magnets at the end of these rods. So basically imagine that this is in a box. I'll put this here. Okay, and you've got to fish. So these are the pieces. I've got various little pieces in the supports. Okay, so let me take out some of these pieces just to show you how beautiful they are. Oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, so imagine that they're in the box and you've now got to, you know, hook these, right? Now, to make this quite challenging, why not blindfold your students? Um, so they've got to play this blindfolded. You can put these little boxes on, on desks or little tables um, and get a blindfolded student, have them sitting down blindfolded. Um, and then they've got to kind of, you know, feel around inside the box and catch something. And the great thing about these is um, at the back, you've got some numbers. So if you catch this shark, it's three points, this whale, it's four points, and so on. Isn't that lovely? I've got some more of the little pieces here. Look at this. Oh, and these also have points at the back as well. Again, just beautiful. I love them. Right, so that's very similar to hook a fish and hook a duck, but this time these are little magnetic wooden pieces. And you know, you can use these uh, magnetic rods in different games as well. You know, it just you can create your own little um, cards and put maybe. Um, what do they call them? Like paper clips at the end of them and words from your word list or grammar points and get your students to fish for them as well, you know. So you can use them for other games too. Why not? Oh, I've, <laughs> I've almost forgotten to show you um, my balance, my other balancing games. I'm rather fond of balancing games. I've got these. So yes, yes, this might be the last one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I've got these. I, I no longer have the boxes because it was a faff trying to put the pieces back together in the boxes. So I decided to put them in these little bags instead. Okay, so let me show you. All right, so we've got the, the ladybug or the ladybird. Let me take that out. Again, oh, beautifully made. Look at that, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so it's like this. And this, um, your students have to try to put these beautiful pieces, as many as possible, onto the ladybug or bird. 
um, and they have to try to stack as many on there um, as they can within a minute or 30 seconds or something like that. Um, and at the end of you know the minute, for example, you count up the number of, of these little pieces they've managed to keep on the slightly rocking ladybug, right? Uh, what's well, slightly rocking ladybird. Okay, um, and that can be a bit of a challenge, especially when you're trying to put these pieces on top of each other. Now, you can also get them to say what's on um, each piece at the end of the game. So to review vocab. So here you've got a leaf, you've got a bird, you've got the number eight. Um, and I actually like, okay, so these were drawn onto these little um, wooden pieces. So these kind of came with the game, but I added um, stickers to, to the ones that weren't illustrated, you know, so um, I wanted them to, to obviously say nouns um, and things from the garden or whatever, things from nature, but I also wanted them to um, review their numbers or this, this can be the number of extra points you get, you know, so you decide how you want to, to play your game, basically. So that one is the lady bug or bird and this one oh by the way they come with dice so you get so if you want to let's say make it a bit more challenging they've got to throw these dice again beautiful wooden dice they've got to throw these dice and they've got to stack the pieces according to the colors that show up so you can do that too um, and let's see, this one is actually a turtle. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's a turtle. I have a mini one as well, and that's a little whale, I think. Let me see. Do I have it here? Hmm. Let's have a look. One moment. Yes, I've got it here. A mini whale. Let's see if I can open this container. Right, so here's the mini whale. <laughs> and this one is not illustrated, so you can actually add stickers. You know, this one just has a little, um, a little water spout, I guess. But yeah, you can also add stickers to these to customize this one. Um, it's quite small, so I hardly ever use it unless, for example, I've got like a fast finisher who wants to um, well, I, I've got a fast finisher I want to keep busy, for example, and they can use this on their little desks. So, yeah. So those are my lovely balancing games. And it doesn't really matter how old you are. You can still play, play with those. Okay. Um, oh, well, these aren't games, but they're wooden. So I want to show them to you. My musical instruments. Okay, so these aren't actually games, they're wooden instruments. Um, I use them a lot with my young learners because we've got lots of um, uh, music songs to sing and things like that. And so my young learners really enjoy running around and, you know, um, <laughs> basically playing these instruments. Uh, but I can also use them in games um, as buzzers I guess so instead of using buzzers if you know the answer to a vocab quiz or grammar quiz you can quickly do this you know so that's the sound of that's the sound your team makes or the sound your group makes when they know an answer or you can do this <laughs> it's not as loud but you see what I mean so you can use these as buzzer type things I guess you know Anywho, right, so we've got these maracas. Doom, 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 doom. Um, so let me put them here. Yeah, so we've got the maracas, uh, these beautiful ones. These I love because you can stand them up as well. These are shakers. Most of them are shakers. 
Oh, I love this. Listen to that beautiful sound. Yay. A rattler. I've got a few of these. So this is another one. And I've got like castanets, I guess. Dum, 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 dum. Those are lovely. And I've even got a drum. Now this drum hasn't been used, so it looks rather pristine. Um, this was um, a new purchase for me. So yeah, lovely. Okay. At, and to finish, let me show you these beautiful bamboo tweezers. So um, imagine you can use these in 101 games. Students have to pick up really small things and place them into pots or place them on, you know, wooden columns or something like this. Aren't those lovely? Bamboo is rather durable. So, you know, you know that these are going to last for a while. But yeah, instead of regular tweezers, I've got these lovely bamboo ones. That right. brings us to the end of what's in your teaching toolbox so that brings me to the end of my wooden games and instruments and things i hope you enjoyed all of this um you might you might have been inspired i don't know but this is just something i'm into uh, when i see um, a beautiful game made of wood or beautiful instrument made of wood i'm i'm always tempted to buy them. So let me know in the comments what type of things you're into, what things basically grab your attention and you know you kind of must have in your teaching toolbox. Until next time, bye!